What's good everybody? It's your boy Big Nate. Welcome to Big Nate's Book Reviews, home of the best book reviews. And this week we got a, something a little different for you. I am gonna fast for five days, no food. Obviously I'm still gonna drink coffee. You can't take that away from me. But yeah, no food, a water, plus coffee fast for five days. And in the time that I would be cooking food, cause I feel like I spend a good two hours a day, give or take, cooking food. I'm gonna spend that time reading and I'm gonna break it down for all you guys. So. Welcome to my last supper. This is leftover from a department I went to yesterday, department event, Institute of Neuroscience. Shout out to them, even though I dropped out and I added the egg, I added the egg. But so um, while I'm eating my last supper, I figured I'd break out, break down, look at that. Ooh, ooh, do you see that? Perfectly cooked. Okay, so there's a couple things I wanna like pay attention to. One, you'll notice I'm in the wife beater, bro. I kinda wanna see if I get like noticeably skinnier. Two, I'm thinking a question I have, an outgoing question, is whether or not, this is fire by the way, shout out to the Institute of Neuroscience, you guys outdid yourself, but I'm thinking like regarding like really will I take, will I like stop taking shits, you know what I mean, if nothing's going in, what's coming out, so that would be interesting. Um, also the effects, like I hear, oh, 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 by the way, the whole this whole thing is inspired from a podcast episode I did with the homie Elliot. So go ahead and get there, but it's called A Hunger Artist by Kafka. And it actually, <laughs> I won't even, it's not the type of thing you'd expect to like want to start fasting after you read it, but like I was nonetheless interested. And I went down this whole like rabbit hole of people fasting and apparently it's like the first couple days are terrible. But then after that, it's like a, allegedly you get, you feel very alert and awake and high energy and all that. So. I'm kind of just curious. I'm not doing this for any health reasons. Not even really spiritual reasons. It's like a testament of will. And it's for this, I'm about to, all the time I've said cooking, I'm about to start reading. So another thing too, I'm the type of person who eats three square meals a day. Like that's mandatory. And I'm also the type that like, I will be in bed and it's late. But if, I, if I'm hungry, I will get my ass up and cook like a whole ass little meal because I cannot go to bed on an empty stomach. So in reality, I'm kind of like the worst person to do this, especially since I've never even done like the Ramadan fat, like the sun up to sunrise, but I figure I'll jump in whole hog. And like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing reading. So <clears throat> I'm about to finish this last supper um, and I will keep you guys posted uh, as we go throughout the fast. Okay, here we go. I'm the type to save the best, the last bite for the best, the last, Wait, hold, the best bite for last. Wow, that was crazy. Uh, so here it is. Mmm. The final bite of my last supper. Actually, I am gonna lick the plate. I don't know if I'll show you guys that, but um, I lick the plate every time I make an egg because the ooey gooey gets over the plate, and I'll be damned if I miss out on one lick of that. So, okay, but no, I'll catch you guys on the other side for real. Okay, and real quick, now that I've officially finished finished the meal, it is one. I don't even think you can see that. It's one p.m on June 8th. So, the fast officially begins now. All right, what's good everybody? It is 5.32 p.m. So we are about four and a half hours into this fast and I am already ready to give up for real. I am so fucking hungry, it's crazy. But in the meantime, um, I'm about to go work out. Shout out Planet Fitness, $10 a month, but no judgment zone. They will ring the lunk alarm on you. I've seen them do it. But in the meantime, I have also been reading Macbeth. So I'm at the part where he's about to he's about to do the deed, you feel me? But all I got to say is this lady Macbeth. She's the one pulling the strings. She is a savage, bro. She's talking about like she's nursing a newborn babe and she like some about she would take the nipple out his mouth, out his boneless gums and dash his brains out. I'm like, sheesh, bro. That's crazy. That's dirty lady McBee. But um anyway, I'm about to go work out. Uh, like I said, I'm fucking hungry, but I will keep you guys posted. I thought I was hungry. Now I am hungry. It is 1130, so we are 10 and a half hours into the fast, and things have gotten much worse. Things have taken a turn. I am feeling capital H hungry, profoundly hungry. And it was like, after I worked out, which that was a questionable move in the first place, like, 
In the beginning, I had energy. I was like tapping into reserves and then like, then it hit me. I was feeling hungry in places in my stomach that I did not even know existed. And I was rewatching, I was like editing the footage from this morning, bro. I was pissed at earlier me. Yeah, my dog also was washing down his, the food that he just ate. And I'm not even gonna lie, bro. That dog food was looking appealing. In the meantime, I have been reading um, The Name of the Wind. So I actually went and um, picked this up from the homie Dom. And this is like a full ass fantasy book. I've killed like 50 pages too. That's one thing. I notice I actually have a lot more time in the day. Like it's, it's noticeable. Um, you pay that price and I will give anything to eat some fucking food right now. And I hope this gets better. Like how long? Cause I, as I understand it, it's like after some point it's supposed to like, you kind of just like are no longer hungry. That point seems nowhere in sight. And in fact, I feel like it's going to get worse. But um, the name of the wind so far, I'm quite enjoying. I can tell it's one of those things where it's like, once we're around this territory, shit's gonna be like crazy. You can just tell from the get-go. It's already super dope. But without further ado, I will check back with you guys when I check back with you. So see you on the other side. Okay, what's good everybody? It is officially 2.30 p.m. on June 9th. And um, so we are officially on day two of the fast. And the last video, I was talking about how the video before that, I did not know what hunger was. Well, I say the same thing to the video before that. Cause last night, at like 12, 1, 2 in the morning, it was like a spiritual trip to the underworld through which I emerged not unscathed. Like, I can't even, hunger is not even the word for it, bro. I, if I wasn't doing this video, I'm pretty sure I for sure would've quit at that point. And I'm for real having visions of like, what's been on my mind is like egg rolls, bro, or like a nice bowl of like pho and just like or Thai or some Thai curry dude like I'm for real ha I'm not even kidding when I have visions and I dreamed last night that I like broke my fast and I ate and I was like oh okay it doesn't matter that shit was worth it this is so good so dude it's it's fucking with me psychologically but no uh like alertness energy level wise like physical energy I actually feel very normal I'm just like fucking hungry but Anyway, this morning when I would have made breakfast, I continued reading, but before that, first, like before breakfast, my morning routine is coffee read time, which I still did, and I started with The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. Today he was taught, I'll just say one of the things I read today, which was the idea of like the cosmological cycle. And he compares it actually to dreams, like the origin, birth, and then eventually regression back into that abyss of nothingness, that whole thing of like the universe, which is a common mythical theme. My favorite was the Hindu one where there's like, it's like a cycle of four parts where it's basically like these ancient beings that were like, just ex like in the highest level, they were essentially gods. And then it gets a little worse each time. And we're in one of the last cycles where it's just all the sin and avarice and greed of the world goes up. And eventually the whole thing is just like flooded with earth or not, uh, fire and water. And the earth is like just a, a primordial ocean for as long as the previous four cycles upon which it begins again and again. The cosmological cycle, the flood myth, all of those are found all throughout cultures, like universally across the world and across history. But um, anyway, oh, but that wasn't, he compared the whole idea of like, with waking life, like you wake up and like your the daytime work exhausts your energies and then you go back to sleep into that like, you know, that primordial ocean, that abyss, that unconscious abyss to replenish your energies. And he compares like the whole cycles of the universe to that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then after that, when I would have made breakfast, I went on to the name of the wind, which is getting good now too. I mean, it's been good. It has a very like readable quality to it, but um, I'm like 80 pages into it now and they're introducing like the magic element of things which is very similar to um a wizard of ursi where it's like things have like their original name and if you know their name then you can like harness that power so um and ursi was dope i'll talk about that in a bit too but um anyway day two i don't know i hope the hunger thing passes and i enter that enlightened state pretty fucking soon because i'm starving i am starving but all right, well, anyway, I will catch you guys on the other side. What's good, everybody? Just wanted to chime in. I have officially reached a new low. I just took my dog on a walk, and there were two main events. One, there was a crusty-ass piece of bread that had never looked so appealing to me in my life. Second off, I was truly debating eating grass, bro. And I'm not even just saying that. I'm like, bro, just like a leaf, some just... But then I, and I would be totally down. I would have been down for both of them. But the first one is obviously food. And then I decided the second one couldn't count because grass would still count as food. So that's where we're at. But basically, it's just been nonstop hunger. And furthermore, it continues to deepen. 
I describe my stomach as cavernous. But anyway, I'll check back with you later. Okay, what's good everybody? It is 3.12 on June 10th, so we are officially on the third day of the fast. Yesterday was rough, in no small part because I went out and there was food everywhere. There was chips and guac and tacos, but those tacos were 450 each, so honestly, I'd have been fasting anyway, bro. None of that shit, but anyway, it was, I had, I had truly achieved a, what I would call a new level of hunger just in my, in my entire life. Um, hunger like I have not known. But I woke up today feeling like kind of okay. And then I started reading this book that was like, dude, the, the character, in, in fact, In the Name of the Wind, which I can go ahead and talk about first. But In the Name of the Wind, he's like hungry and starving. And like he's getting he's finding meals with like bread and like hot chicken and turkey breast and like bro, potatoes and it was bro it was literally make i wasn't hungry until i started reading that and then my stomach said but um so i'm on a page like 150 of the name of the wind and i would just say again it would be a spoiler but there were there have been some significant developments the plot has escalated as they say and again i will just point out there are more i don't know if it's just because i read a wizard of earthsea or if there's some inspiration of that book to this one but um again it's like the whole magic system is like the the nature of the world like the natural energy of of like the world it seems like and and like the we've gotten a little hint at like what might be like the antagonist of the book and he's described as basically like a shadow like this huge shadow figure like in fact there was a part where a, a shadow bloomed forth like a flower but like thickly dark all that i'm like i'm fucking with this book as you can tell by the fact that i'm already 150 pages in but the whole shadow antagonist thing is straight from a wizard of Ursi, which again is related to the carl jung idea of the shadow self which has emerges in all the different myths which actually leads me to my next book the hero of a thousand faces so um the big thing they talked about that I read like this morning that he talked about was the idea of like the cosmic egg, the idea that like everything, like the world, the universe emerged from like, just in the beginning there was this egg upon which hatching all the myriad forms of, um, all the myriad forms of the world, all the particularities of the manifest world emerged and it's again found across all cultures. And I will just say as a little big Nate side note, it awfully resembles the Big Bang. Wouldn't you think? The cosmic egg. Everything with, was contained within this universal mythical egg upon which it's hatching. All the myriad things in the universe came to, feel, came, came to life. So, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. But up next, we have, <clears throat> again, Macbeth. Oh, it's like Dewey. But, yeah. Um, oh, I got leaves on this. Man. Oh, and I put just put all my... Okay, hold up. The last, like, cool thing I feel like was is Macbeth is starting to, like... He's on some tweaker time, bro, because he sees the ghost of, like, Banquo. And, like, he's in front of a bunch of people. And he's like, yo, what the fuck is this? And they're like, uh... And then, like, the, eventually he banishes the ghost. And it was like, okay, that was weird, right? But it, all of this is in, like, Shakespeare language, right? So I'll just read a little passage. And then the ghost of Banquo appears again. And again, he's in front of, like, lords and very important people. And he's tweaking out. He said, avaunt and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. And Lady Macbeth is trying to cover. He's like, oh, he, he gets these fits. But yeah, bro's tweaking. But in Shakespearean language. So that's basically where I'm at with these three books. In terms of like how I'm feeling right now, my alertness, my energy levels feel very normal, if not like higher. It's just that I'm fucking hungry. That's still here. It's gotten way better. Like, First two days, like last night and night before were like rough, bro. I was fighting demons. But I'm hoping we're at like this like 48 hour mark because we are past that now where like I just start feeling euphoric and enlightened. Where's all that? I mean, that's not even why I did this, but like it wouldn't hurt right now. I'll tell you that much, but shit. Well, without further ado, I will catch you guys on the other side. Okay, what's good, everybody? It is seven in the morning, which is not okay for me. This is unprecedented. I thought it would get better after the 48 mark. If it hasn't gotten worse, it's at least stayed the same. It's again, just like, the thing is, I've said this before, it's it's truly hunger at a level which I have not known before. And the thing is, it stayed, like I've basically just been hungry for like coming up on three days. And I, so I didn't go to bed till like one something, in part just cause I was like up, but I also couldn't sleep cause of like this gnawing hunger. And then I woke up this morning at like six 
So I'm like tired as fuck and I couldn't go and I could not go back to sleep because I was just so hungry and I went to bed like fantasizing about food and I woke up fantasizing about food. Okay, so there's a few things I want to mention like okay So for one yesterday I went to the um, to the park with some of the homies and we were there for a while and I spent a lot of the day reading um, African mythology, but just a little thing to note is the fact that it's like we hung out for a while and then afterwards it was like the natural thing was like everybody was hungry and they felt bad saying it in front of me, but it's like, nah, bro, you can be hungry too, just because I'm not. But it was like, the natural thing to do was go get food. And it was like, I wanted to like continue hanging out, right? This was, it was like a good vibe. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm down. But they were like, nah, bro, we can't eat in front of you. But it's like, no, 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 I'm cool. Like, I'm chill. Because I wanted to like, hey, because it's just, it's funny because food itself offers itself like an opportunity to hang that otherwise would not be there. Like if we didn't get food, it would have just been like, okay, we'll buy it. And my normal day is just like, usually the limiting factor of my activities is like food like i'll be doing something and i'll be like so hungry it's like shit i gotta eat it's like that's something that punctuates my day i'm beholden to like three times a day but i have not that's a nice little perk is i've not had to do that at all like there's nothing but the thing is i want to bro i would gladly give up whatever the fuck i'm doing to cook some food but another interesting thing too actually is i realized that like when i'm cooking food is when i listen to like podcasts or like i'll call my family on the phone or i'll watch youtube or do shit like that so that whole that whole there's this whole set of activities that i do with food like while cooking that i otherwise don't really do that i have not done so like I don't know, it's interesting. It has a, it has had a bigger impact on my life than, than I suspected, but um, anyway, I wanna talk a little bit about this book I've been reading, African Mythology. I've kinda just been going according to the myths that, like I'm not reading it in chronological order, I'm just doing it according to what which strike me as like interesting. But yeah, bro, if you're not on mythology, you need to get on mythology. And African Mythology has been particularly rich, it seems like, but it's just, Mythology, I'm realizing, to me, is essentially like using story and metaphor as a means to try and understand like all the fundamental mysteries of the universe, like the creation of the universe, the creation of mankind, of, of beauty and evil, all the different like elemental properties of the earth, the formation of the earth itself, just everything, like literally the fundamental questions of life mythology is coming up with stories to explain them and and it's like that's the whole point of mythology too is there's that's like that's why they're symbolic is because like they point towards something which is otherwise and this is like the joseph campbell idea they point towards something that is otherwise transcendent inexplicable inarticulable and and myth is just a way to sort of point at the myth itself is not the thing and that's the problem that he says with religion is like people start taking the myth too literally they're all myths and by that by virtue of that all religion are like pointing towards the same fundamental thing which is just the mystery of existence and life but okay i think i am gonna go back inside make some coffee and read some more so pray for me eat a eat a meal for me if you're watching this go make some food and as i'm saying that i'm not even kidding my stomach is grumbling and i'm about to go to berserk if i don't get fucking enlightened anytime soon but anyway I will see you guys in a bit. What's good everybody? It is 4.04 on June 12th. So we are officially on the fifth day of the fast, but I wanna talk about a little bit what I did yesterday. So I kinda out of nowhere have been, for the past couple of days, I've been thinking about this book, Man's Search for Meaning, which I've been meaning to read for a while, but like, and I, I'm not really, I wasn't too familiar with what it was, except it had to do with um, an individual's experience like at a concentration camp. and. Not that I am like trying to compare anything of what I'm doing to anything of that scale of suffering, but like something that has been on my mind is just the idea. Cause again, like, like I said, this is, it, it's not even hunger anymore. And by the way, I have, I still feel profoundly hungry. It has not gone away. If anything, it's only intensified. Um, but the point being is like the idea that somebody and like even shit, you know, like children, like women and children or just anybody, but particular, you know, like that would, they would have to deal with this for like just weeks and months and years and like on a scale so much worse was was just i don't know the, if at the very least this experience like feeling the intensity and low-key like not the pain but yeah no like the pain of this like even just getting a little the smallest taste of that 
an understanding, has given me a new perspective. So basically I went out and impulsively bought this book, Man's Search for Meaning, which I actually had before and literally traded in because I thought I would never read it. But um, I'm about halfway through this and I've been like thoroughly enjoying this and probably in part too because of just like my current experience right now. Like it, it's just, no matter what I'm feeling, a, a book like this really puts like the whole thing in perspective. And it's just a really, just a book about, I think about life and the spirituality and the constant and just the, the nature of suffering in, in the world in general. But par part of what he talks about in this book is like the everyday experience of the concentration camps. And basically among other things, they are of course starving. They get like the smallest little loaf of bread and like tiniest little thing of soup a, and like per day. And they, and sometimes oftentimes less than that. And they're all, they're just so crowded that they like have to, you know, they have to like sleep on their sides because there's not even room. Like they're literally packed like sardines. And like, not only are they like starving and like horrible, filthy conditions and everything like that, but they are also doing every day, day in, day out like intense intense manual labor like oftentimes in straight snowstorms and it's just right like there was a part where he talked about like this 12 year old kid like his feet were like blackened with uh frostbite and the doctor was literally able to peel it off like like tweezers and i've said this before but like this is one of the things i love about literature like it's one thing to read about the holocaust in textbooks it's another thing to see like given it have it given flesh and blood and to read about what the everyday experience is like and he's also talking about this book is also so far at least and i'm halfway through it's very much a book about spirituality the idea that you can find some kind of some semblance of inner solstice and peace through through the idea of like spirituality within the like the inner mind this leads me to some sad news my friends long story short i woke up this morning and i was like not feeling good basically every time i stand up at this point i there is a non-zero chance i feel like i'm about to pass out like i had to i had to grip a lamp and like hold up onto the wall and it's like i'm just like and i was reading i was having my coffee read time and it was like you know it went well for a little bit but after a certain point it's like dude i can't i can't even focus on reading and again i'm like i'm so hungry and it's like you know why am i why am i even really doing this? especially if i can't read because like that's that was really like the whole point of this video like i'm not doing this it was a bit of a testament of will and i i do feel i this this don't get me wrong this is a failure but like i decided to set myself the new goal of fasting for 100 hours of which we are very close so because the uh, point is I'm, I'm i'm i regret to say that i am breaking my fast except i don't really regret it um because for one i've read some amazing books and two i'm about i went to the grocery store earlier you don't understand bro you don't understand what that did to me and so i have groceries i'm gonna go make a meal and if if god willing the next shot you will see of me will be eating food okay everybody it is 5 30 on monday june 12th so we are officially 100.5 hours into the fast and i just made some food i am so excited for that it's it's um kung pao chicken by j kenji lopez all it's got ginger and like red pepper chili peppers and szechuan and garlic and oh my goodness bro i'm not even ready for this oh my god oh my god bro mm. Oh, mm, bro, praise God, praise God. Bro, never, never will I take food for granted again. This is so fucking good. Honestly, I can't even be in front of the camera like this. I'm gonna go. And I've been watching Chainsaw Man, so I'm gonna bring this. I might not even do anything. I might just enjoy this. But anyway, wow! Thank God that is over. I'm about to destroy this chicken, although slowly, because you know my stomach is shrunken and everything. But um, let me know if you read any of these books. Uh, what other books I should read? And for the record, after that first day, I have taken no shits at all. Thank you for watching Big Nate's Book Reviews, home of the best book reviews.